2018 meeting of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission to order and try to figure out. There we go. You have to hold us for a second. It's the little, the little guy talking. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Before before we proceed into the uh, agenda and calling of the roll, we have a number of new faces here today. And so I'd like to introduce them because they'll play a part in what we do this evening. And uh, most of you met Jason Freed, our interim executive officer. And Sloan Bailey joins us uh, as the city, as city representative, uh, as a council member from Corte Madera. And Vida Flores, uh, who is our assistant um, policy analyst. Okay, and going to be the clerk today. And Malathi uh, Sub. Subamanian, Subamanian. I'm going to get it. She told me I had part of it right, and I knew I was going to flub the rest. But she said, just call me Mala, which I'll do. <laughs> I want to welcome Mala, who is uh, our counsel with Best Best and Krieger, and she's joined us this evening, and I'm sure we'll see her around. So welcome. Thank you all. So if I can proceed to the roll call, um, Vita, if you could do that for us, please. Commissioner Blankenfield? Here. Commissioner Bailey? Here. Commissioner McEntee? Here. Commissioner Connolly? Commissioner Connolly absent. Commissioner Rodoni? Here. Commissioner Baker? Here. Commissioner Murray? Here. Alternate Commissioner Skelton? Alternate Commissioner absent. Alternate Commissioner Brown. Good evening. Alternate Commissioner Arnold. Absent. Commissioner Arnold absent. Alternate Alternate Commissioner Kios. Caius. Caius. <laughs> oh, so close. Take it. You're here. Okay. We do have a, a quorum. Thank you very much, Peter. We can do our business and. Uh, Agenda review, does anyone wish to consider, have us consider changing things on the agenda or the order of the agenda that we've set out this evening? Seeing none, uh, I'll move to open time. This is the time we set aside on our agenda for members of the public to address the commission on matters that we don't have scheduled for discussion uh, this evening. And I do not see that many members of the public wishing to address this. Uh, I'll move then to consent calendar items. Uh, you'll notice that the consent oh, my oh, sorry. It's on in here. There it is, yeah. Um, the consent items are reduced in scale from what we're used to, which is, is great. So uh, to, to approve any of these matters, we'll, I'll need a motion from the commission to Approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Baker and second by Commissioner Murray to approve the consent calendar. All commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstained? The motion passes. Uh, we'll now move to the public hearing matter. Uh, the first item, and Jason, I think you'll take this, is the uh, commission ratification and adoption of our operating budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. Sure, thank you. Uh, Jason Freed, your executive officer, interim executive officer. Um, in front of you today is the annual budget approval. You, at the last meeting, approved the proposed budget. Um, before her departure, your former interim executive officer, uh, Rachel Jones, had put this together. Um, I would actually yield to the budget committee members if they had any comments on it. Otherwise, I would encourage you to approve it so we can meet the June 15th deadline for by state statute to approve our budget. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the operating budget for the next fiscal year? I have a motion by Commissioner Baker, and I'm sure a second by Commissioner Murray. Second. Uh, to, approve, to, approve, uh, 
approve the uh, operating budget for the next fiscal year. All commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion passes and we have an operating budget for fiscal year 2018-2019. The next item has us going into closed session. So if I could ask the staff to step out. So we're returning to open session and our council will summarize what if any action we took. Thank you, Chair. The uh, commission decided to close the recruitment process. And the first business item is the uh, item number five, uh, authorization to execute new contract with Plan West Partners, uh, interim executive officer. Thank you, Chair, members of the commission. As you're aware, the commission executed a contract with Plan West Partners for interim executive officer. Can you start the mic? What? I'm sorry. As you're aware, the commission executed a contract with Plan West Partners for interim executive officer services. It was a 60-day contract. It was dated May 22nd. It'll expire on July 20th. And the services are being provided by Mr. Jason Freed. And the agreement, as I mentioned, will expire on July 20th. And this will be before your next regularly scheduled meeting. So what we have on the agenda is a discussion about authorizing the chair to extend the agreement. Um, it is my recommendation that we utilize a model template from our firm rather than utilize the agreement that is in your packet. Um, and if you authorize the chair to extend the agreement for, let's say, through the end of the uh, calendar year, through December 31st, 2018, you will not need to meet again. And in light of the fact that you have closed your recruitment process, this would allow for continuity of the interim EO services. The other option would be to call a special meeting, but in light of the closure of the recruitment process, I think it makes most sense, um, should you so desire, is to authorize the chair to execute a new agreement with Plan West Services for interim EO services for, with Mr. Jason Freed. Okay. Uh, any commissioner comments on the, those? Uh, uh, Mala, th this would be authorizing the chair under the same terms. Right. It would be... Excuse me. Yes, it would be under the terms for the, I guess the uh, compensation is $112 per hour. So we would use, this is, this in your packet is functionally a scope of services, but we would put it in a model form, but it would, it would utilize the same terms. Thank you. Okay, and, and while I understand, I understand right. that if the chair is to, to execute this, that uh, the general counsel will be a major part of the process. Yes. So that's a recommended motion. Um, any comments the commissioners may have? If not, I'll entertain a motion to proceed as outlined. I move alternative one. Second. Motion and a second to approve alternative one, authorizing the chair to execute a new agreement uh, that would be provided by our council for Plan West Partners. All those. Sorry, I, until, the, until the end of the calendar year. And, yes, until Sorry, the end, end, of, end of this calendar year. And following the general framework um, laid out in the uh, document concerning this. So, any other comments? All those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? That motion passes and we will move to the Cal LAFCO conference and um, well, Jason will let you explain. 
Uh, Jason Fried, Executive Officer. So in your packet of materials, you have a, a brief highlight, but you also have a lot of supporting materials. There, every year, CalAFCO has its annual conferences. Those of you that have been on the LAFCO for a while probably are aware. Um, this year, it'll be held out in Yosemite. Um, at this meeting, there's only one item that really needs to have your attention if you want to take action on it. The other two can be held off until the August meeting. The one that has to take action today is they have nominations for awards that they give out, out at the annual meeting, and those nom that nomination period ends prior to our next meeting. So if you wanted to make any nominations, I would encourage you to do so today. It has to come from the commission and, uh, as a whole. Um, we, we can't do it just on the side on our own. So if there was any interest, two years ago we were nom we nominated ourselves, from what I understand, that's generally how the process works. You nominate yourself. So, um, <laughs> We nominated Strong ourselves, man. and we did receive an award. Um, I, I, since I am new here, I would yield to the commission. There is a list of a whole long list of different categories that you can apply for or nominate things for. So I would encourage you to look through that list, and if there's something that we want to nominate for, make a motion tonight, and we can do so. Otherwise, we can skip that item and not have any nominations this year. The other two items are um, they have, uh, in order to get the early bird special, uh, get a, a slightly cheaper rate for uh, conference fees, um, we need to get that in in August as well, which is just prior to actually the next meeting. So you don't need to actually make a motion or do anything on that tonight. It's just more of an informational item for you on that part of it. So you can decide if you want to, uh, who wants to go, we can then sign people up and, and get them in on the early bird special. If people don't take advantage of that, we pay the full price um, for it. Um, I do plan on reserving one spot for the executive officer. I do think it's an important event for uh, all executive officers tend to be there. So I think it's important for who, whoever it is, whether it's myself or someone else in the future, to, to take that spot. And then the final part is um, they have board nominations as well. We don't have to take action on that tonight. Those are not due until September. Um, so we could wait to do it. Every, uh, every region, and we are in one of the four regions, gets assigned which seats can actually serve. So not any individual from the from this board can be nominated. You actually physically have to be from a county seat or from a special district seat. That's what the coastal region is, which is the region we're in. If any of those commissioners wish to, to run, they have to be nominated by their board. So we, like I said, if one of the commissioners from one of those seats wants to run, we can do that tonight. It's on the agenda and, and we can make that nomination. If you wanna think about it, we can postpone it and do it at the next meeting. If I get a big, like, no one's interested, we just don't have to, we can just kill it today and not and not worry about it at the next meeting. So I'll yield to the commission on if they want to do that. And that's all I have to report on that item. Okay, so at least for a representative sitting on the Cal Lafco board, it's either a special <laughs> district or a county. Or a county seat, correct. Sorry to our city and public members, you don't, we don't get to nominate them from this region. Great. Oh, yeah, so um, Jason, I'm not sure if you're aware. I've ran a few times before, mm -hmm. and we, we get pretty close. Uh, there is a sitting uh, member from Contra Costa County that I believe is elevated uh, on, into another position, so I need to check with them. I, I think we probably should have a pretty strong vote from Al Alameda this year. Uh, and so I need to kind of uh, see, see how things are, but I, I would be interested and, and at least putting in the running for it again and see, having Marin wrap on, on the Cal yeah. I'm more than happy to work with you over the course of the next couple of months while we get to the next meeting. And if you decide to run, we can put you, we can either decide today to put your nomination in there or we can wait till the next meeting. I would yield to you to do whichever you prefer. Okay, yeah, I'll work with you. Yeah, I, I think developing a strategy of how you're going to win is important early on because uh, they're really, delegates are really buttonholed there. And uh, so that all the help that we can give Craig would be great. I, I used to be a run campaign, so I'm more than happy to help you out any way I can. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chair, just yes. a little history. Our last Cal Lafco representative was Richard Rubin, I believe, oh, about wow. God knows, 18 years ago, wow. 15 years ago. So, yeah. Quite a while ago. Yeah. I, move, right. I move we nominate Craig as our as a special district yes. candidate. Okay, we have a motion to nominate Craig and assist him in every way we can. Uh, all the commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? Good luck, Craig. Thank you. Okay. Just one. Yeah, okay. So thanks, Jason. On, in terms of awards, I did go through those. Uh, you know, we were very fortunate to win the Outstanding Project of the 
year award, uh, and uh, that was received well. Uh, there's one section, I'm not sure what the other commissioners have looked at, is an outstanding Calafco member. And it says, recognize a Calafco board member or staff uh, who has uh, who's proved exemplary during the past year. So this, this would be keen. And it, it might be a real nice touch to uh, recognize the efforts uh, Keen has provided to Marin. I think his, his short time here, he's, he's done a lot and kind of taken us to a different level. Uh, but I, I just want to put that out there for the uh, rest of the commissioners to consider. What, what's the difference between the outstanding commissioner and the outstanding lactal professional? I guess it can be. One staff. Yeah, it's so the, board member. So for for the staff, it seems to me that that should be the outstanding medical professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I would definitely second that manner. I think there's a lot. Keen's activities and, and how they've advanced Marin Lafco and Lafco as, as a whole. This bike can be a Well, we have a motion in a second. Uh, I would like to see if uh, commissioners support this. Um, so all those in favor of uh, nominating Keen as the outstanding it's the outstanding LAFCO professional signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? Uh, so he will be our nominee and we'll work on what's necessary to support that nomination. Yeah, I'll put together some of the packet materials. I'll, of course, need your, your help, because you were the ones here that were working with him. I wasn't. I mean, I worked with him through San Francisco, but you will definitely have more of the knowledge of what he's done. So I'll help put together the packet. Does anyone have any ideas for projects we should submit, reports, or anything for the project of the year? I think next year would be yeah. a better job. <laughs> but it's, it's good to think when you're doing those larger projects, if that is one of your end results that it be crafted such that it makes a good and easy application. Okay, uh, I'll move on to item number seven, the election of chair and vice chair. Um, Jason, do you have anything to say on that? Or uh, it staff has no position. We yield to the commission to make its decisions. Well, I'll nominate uh, the re-election of our uh, esteemed chair. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, to short-circuit that, uh, I, was, I said that, I'm sorry, every time I press this little guy, he goes off. Um, when I was appointed to the commission as public member last time, I said it, uh, I had been on it a long time, and I told Keen I would, would stay on to help him through the process and I think I've done that and uh, I, would, I plan to uh, step down from LAFCO and uh, I think that uh, it should, this chair should be opened up to someone else on LAFCO. I don't turn this off. <laughs> yeah and I'd, I'd like to note that Jeff, I recall the last time you, you again stepped up uh, and took the mantle at our request with that admonition, though, <laughs> uh, which we appreciate. Um, but in part respecting your decision, I would be prepared to nominate Sashi. I had a motion and a second to nominate Sashi Makati to be the chair. Any other motions on this before we close it? Okay. Uh, we have a 
A motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? Motion passes. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Your first act will be to handle the vice chair. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so do we... That's what we were just asking. Yeah, we were trying to figure out if you take over this second or... or after, at the next yeah. meeting, right? At the it next meeting, meeting, right? <laughs> So then we also have the vice chair, but since it's immediately, I'm just going to sit All there. right. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I want to echo Damon um, on that. Well, thank and you, you can, sir. You can use that with a liberal force. <laughs> I want to echo Damon and, and really thank uh, uh, Jeff for his services chair. He's really uh, helped us through difficult time here and I really appreciate your your time as chair and your leadership so I want to say thank you very much Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you can deal with them Sarah and, oh uh, <laughs> and the lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> well um, all right so any nominations for vice chair? I, I would uh, nominate uh, Craig Murray. Second. Any further nominations? All right all, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Mr. Murray, congratulations, Mr. Vice Chair. <laughs> Looking forward to working with you. All right. And moving on. All right, uh, item number eight, review and approval contract extension with Marin Mac Tech. Jason, do you uh, have a report? Yeah, sure, Jason Freed, Executive Officer. Um, uh, when I was first brought on here, I started looking at it some, through some of the paperwork, and I realized that your IT services are done through Marin Mac Tech. I've been very impressed with their work, but their contract comes to expire before the next meeting occurs. I didn't want to go without having IT support for, for, our, uh, for our commission. So in front of you today is a, an a one-year extension of that contract. Um, it, is, it is the exact same contract that we have with them now, no changes whatsoever, other than the expiration date. Um, I have a personal philosophy of trying to get all contracts to expire at the end of a fiscal year. Um, that way it makes it really easy. If it, the process I would always take is I will go, especially given how this LAFCO works, I would go in February, March, talk to all the contracts that expire and get them, figure out what needs to be done, bring those to the April meeting so you're approving your contracts. Coincidentally, April is when you're doing your proposed budget. So you're approving all your contracts. You're no longer going to have to have this question mark of, hey, what happens if one of our contracts goes up mid-year and you have to re-extend it? You have to go and sit and work with your budget again. So my goal is to get everything lined up as contracts start expiring, getting them lined up. It doesn't mean that we will always do a one-year contract. You can do two or three-year contracts. Just make sure that they are expiring at the end of the fiscal year. So you're having a good policy moving forward with how you're proposing your budgets and working that out. So that's the only change in there. If we were to go to a, um, the other alternative is just to use them. We pay them now on a monthly basis. Um, the other alternative is to pay them by the hour. Um, I would not recommend the hourly one right now, uh, just based on transitions going on. I have seen our IT person probably for half of a year's worth of our contract fees would be what we'd be paid just in the one month I've been here. So I would highly encourage us to keep going with the monthly fee. We're getting a very good deal on it. Um, and also by not trying to renegotiate anything in the contract other than the, the closure date, um, they're willing to keep us at the rate that we had. If we were to go to them as a new contractor right now, we'd be paying $45 more per workstation, which is about $180 a month. So we were able to, I was able to save us $180 just by keeping the status quo in some ways. So I would encourage your, uh, your approval of um, the contract that's presented to you as it is. Great. Any questions from the commission? I have one question. We switched to a whole new computer system a few, excuse me, a few months back. How are they working? I know you've only been here a short period of time. I think the system, the system has a few bugs in it, um, and we're working them out. Um, it's, I think it's partly because there's been staff transitions and stuff like that. There is one thing, just so you're aware, I will probably be bringing back to your August meeting uh, a need for a new server. 
the server that we actually used was not transferred over it, when all of the workstations were done. We still have our old PC. The PC itself is fine and works just dandy. The problem is we use a very outdated version of Windows and uh, Microsoft has stopped updating that. So we will soon be in a security issue with our server if we don't change it out. Um, and I've, I've asked our IT folks to either look at updating Windows or just giving us a brand new computer and, and, and I will come back to you with what the price points are on that. They had not had a chance to physically do that um, at this point, but we are working very diligently to try and get that done for the next meeting. Jason, we pay them $100 a month for the server, right? Was that, was that, or was, yeah, that, the, was, that was that $100 because $100 was the contract increase if we were new or was it 100 we, we pay we pay currently $100 per workstation, I believe, is, and I can look in the, in the packet, but we pay them per workstation. The server is considered one of the workstations. So what we would do is we would need to buy the, what we, they give us the IT support to support any work that needs to be done on it, but if we need to buy something new, that is actually separate from the contract. So if we needed to go buy new computers, new iPads, a new server, that is different um, from the contract that we have. The contract we have is for them to physically come in and make sure everything's functioning right. And at this point, they can do that, except our server is going to have an issue that they're not gonna be able to keep it updated because Windows has stopped giving updates for it. So they, there's nothing they can do at that point because they can't create the, their own updates. So uh, we should also look into just some cloud-based option instead of a physical server that we have to maintain, right? So paying, paying I can, Dropbox $100 a year versus purchasing in it. Um, yeah, I will talk to him about that. I think that there is normally some desire to have an on-site system that is not all cloud-based. There are some security issues that you can have, um, like our QuickBooks and stuff like that is kept on the server. I'm not sure you necessarily want to have that up on the cloud. Um, so I will talk to him, though, about security issues and if we should just go completely cloud-based. But in the past, I'm not an IT person myself, but I've always been told that you always have something, a physical box you need to keep someplace. Um, and how big or how powerful that box is, is, is up to the organization. So, but I'll bring that up with them. Got it. Yes, Craig. So Jason, um, would it be beneficial if we had option years as well to hold the price for future? I know that you want to close it out then the fiscal year, but uh, in order to continue this, if we're happy with the service, uh, so we don't have to re-up the con, in effect, we'd have option years to continue it on and hold the price and hold the service. The, the current contract as it sits, if we were never to ask them to do anything else, it will the current contract will automatically renew unless one side tells the other side that something needs to change with at least 30 days notice. So if they could come, they could come to us and say, we're willing to renew, but we want to actually increase your price, we would then, we would have to have that discussion and approval of that. But if we do nothing, and it, it, it's true with the current contract we have with them, if we do nothing, it just automatically renews and continues to go. We could have a discussion, do we want to talk to them about renewing or just let it automatically renew next year because prices probably will go up at some point and maybe they, it slips past them if you wanted to take a, a approach. But that's not the style I, I personally like to use, but um, it, it is something that we could look at is for upcoming years. If we do nothing right now, the other options do nothing. Current contract stays as it is any which way. It's just a different expiration date. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Moved by Commissioner Murray, seconded by Commissioner Baker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Jason, thank you for thinking ahead on the fiscal year renewal. All right, we are now moving on to the executive officer report, and this is the Jason's new format that we're trying out for the agenda, so take it away, Jason. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, before you have uh, four different items that are under executive officer support, in my view, the way the agenda had been set up in the past, you were approving items on the consent calendar that don't actually need action commission. It's more just an update of what the staff is doing and the status and state of, of LAFCO in and of itself. So I moved all those to the executive officer support because for me, that's more where that fits more, more efficiently into the system. So what you have is some of the old reports that you would have seen on the consent calendar now here, and then I will also have, just so you're aware, some verbal updates after we get through those four items. Um, three of the items, to be fair, are all uh, stuff that Rachel did prior to her departure. Um, they deal with the budget update, um, where we're at the fiscal year. We're, fiscally, we're very fine. We're, we're in good shape. We have plenty of money left over. I've actually started to look at paying some of our 
uh, 18, 19 bills in this calendar year since we have the money left over. So we, it won't, we'll have a, give us a little bit more flexibility come next year as well. Um, so we, we have that flexibility in the system and I'm, I'm gonna try and utilize that uh, system uh, for, for our budget, but we, we are fiscally fine. Um, we have the money that we need in the system. Um, if you, I can run through all four, all, or at least three of these. The fourth one I wanna actually have a discussion with you on. Um, if you have questions, though, feel free to interrupt me. On the progress Sorry, report. Sorry, hang on, Jason. Yeah. Um, Mala, would it be better if we just, uh, since, since these items require approval or? They don't require any they approval. They don't require approval, they're just informational, so we yeah. can just go through them. Okay, great. Um, so item B is the, uh, is, is the state, oh wait, no, I'm sorry, yeah. Item B is the progress report. Um, there are a couple of updates actually in this one that I wanted to make sure you were aware of. Um, yes, if you look to, oh, I'm sorry, that's actually item C. I'm getting myself ahead of myself there. Um, this is another one that Rachel uh, put together before she did it. I think it speaks for itself. I don't really have any updates beyond what's, what's written there. Um, going to item C, uh, another report that Rachel put together, thankfully. This one I wanna have a little bit of a discussion about um, for two reasons. One is I wanna give you some updates, some things that have actually occurred since she wrote this memo um, that I've taken care of in the last week or two or have gotten information back on. Um, if you go to uh, the first page of, I, of section C, the reorganization of Mesa Road, we did get word that they're likely going to come back to us and need an extension. They're working through the Coastal Commission and the Coastal Commission is not working very quickly. So they will likely run out of their year review and I'll, I will be bringing back either in, probably in the August meeting um, a request to extend. Uh, we will go through the process of doing that at that meeting simply because they need time from to go through the Coastal Commission process. Um, I realize not on this memo, but is one of the files that we're, we're almost complete with is file 1336, which is, um, which deals with the two uh, sanitation districts. You were asking four properties into them, if you, you may re recall. Um, <coughs> Ross Valley and Sanitation District 2 are those, the two districts that I'm referring to. We received a check from them and I was going through the Board of Equalization process to get the, the final, final step done. Um, at, since I had not actually done one of those before in San Francisco LAFCO, I worked with the, my friends at Plan West Partners and they gave me actually a good, very good half hour tutorial on, on how that process works. And in doing so, I quickly realized that the application, we did it as one application, the Board of Equalization considers it two applications. We had requested one check for $350. In reality, we need two checks for $350 to cover both sanitation districts. I've reached out to the two sanitation districts they realized that what has occurred and they thanked us for catching this before we sent it to the Board of Equalization because they would have rejected it um, or at least told us to send us a second check. So they are in process of getting that second check to us. As soon as we get that second check, I will file that and that case or that file number will be completed and done is waiting now simply for that second check to occur. So wanted to give you that update. And then on annexation, uh, file 1322 annexations of 700 and 726 Sequoia Road, we have now, since this report was put out, have submitted to the county registrars our, com our file of completion. Um, they have accepted it. It takes about two or three weeks, from what I understand, in Marin for that process to be completed. Once we get that back, we will um, go through the Board of Equalization process. This is one check. I've already notified them. They, are, they already have it in their process to have the check cut to us. So it is at this point a race. Does the county get us the, the recording first, or do we get the check first from, from, uh, the, from the sanitation district there? And once we have both of them, I will file the final, make the final step on that one. Um, and then just as a quick update on uh, file 1338, annexation of 610 Cali de la Mesa, um, just prior to Rachel's leaving and with me still being here, we met with the applicant. Um, they gave us some comments that they felt that the, um, that the city was actually gonna be supportive of doing this. Up to this point, Rachel had been under the impression the city was opposed to doing this annexation. Um, and so I have reached out to the, the city planner who's in charge of that, have not heard back yet, but we'll continue to follow up to see, is there an agreement and finally in place and trying to set up a meeting between us, the applicants uh, representative and the city to see if we can't figure out how to do something before bringing anything to, to this body uh, in the future. Um, and so those are the updates that I have on item C. If you have any questions on that, I'm happy to take it because I know there are some updates in there. That was pretty rapid fire. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, Commissioner Murray. Uh, Jason, just on the last one, that was, uh, I think in Nevada, do, we had some members of the public 
I'm going to speak to it. So mm -hmm. one of the commission meetings on the urban growth boundary and kind of a, a concern about a precedent setting. Is, is this the item related to that? I, not having been at that meeting, I don't know if they were related to this. This one is a very specific parcel where it is a very small section of the person's backyard is in the city of Novato. Their front yard, how you get access to the property from a like practical standpoint is physically in an island. Um, and they're in the middle of the island, so it's not like you could like take them out and you know it would move down. The one thing that they did tell us during that meeting, however, so you're aware is if we ever went to annex that island, they would support it. Um, so at the very least, if nothing else comes out of this, they would be willing to support it, but they, they feel that having them sucked into the city would mean they would kind of be an island within an island from an access standpoint of how services get to them. Where is this location? This is at uh, 610, yes. I couldn't tell you beyond that. Uh, it's the city of Novato is where they're connected to. Yeah, I, I appreciate the chance uh, to see this square this is. I'm quite familiar with the area. Okay. Yeah. I can get I you a map. It, I thought it was totally in the, in the in, you know, the whole thing was is an island and that there wasn't any sort of stray. There's, there's a question of the very back section of their backyard. It's like their whole property is like an acre and it's this is like 0 0.3 of an acre 0 .03. is, 0 0.03 of an acre is left in yeah. the city of Novato somehow. Do you have an exhibit that I could look at? Or uh, they had one. I can get it from them and, and pass it on to you. Yeah, one, they, they, they needed to repair their back fence, is, the, is what they said. And when they went to go get the permits to repair the back fence, the county said, wait, you're in the city. That, that little section there is actually in the city of Novato, so we can't give you the permits. There's a creek there. Yeah, there's some sort of creek at that location, yes. Okay. <coughs> Jason, if we could, <clears throat> on the budget item um, oh. with the unexpected balance, our policy, I think, in the past has been to put that to reserve, which we have a reserve policy, and I believe it's 180000 is the goal. And so our policy has been to put the balance into the reserve. We can change that, but I just wanted to let you know that we do have a, a policy for reserve that I think is underfunded at this point. Thank you for catching that. I'll, I'll, I'll check to see where we're at with that 180 and make sure that if, we, if at all possible we, we keep it. I don't spend anything ahead of time then in that case. That would, that would have the same effect as what you were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just going to say the res in that action by funding the reserve, has it bailed us out in future type years? So this is sort of like the state's rainy day fund that uh, I think we have photographs on. If you're referring, I think it's a 20% reserve, which would actually be about 120000 But if there's a different policy, I'll look at it. I, I'm pretty sure it's a specified number. Okay. Any commissioner questions on the uh, thank you uh, on the budget, the work plan, uh, pending applications? Anything else? In that case, then let's have a quick discussion. In that case, then let's have a quick discussion on the workshop. Um, we have one scheduled in September. I wanted to give this as a time to first start thinking about it. We can also come back and talk a little bit more in the August meeting. But I wanted to get. I, I was watching some of the previous meetings. I know that there had been discussions um, at the meetings. But to be fair, I couldn't really find good notes about, about a, it sounded like some stuff was discussed maybe outside the meeting as well with individual staff. So I, I figured this was a good chance to refresh our memories on what we were looking to get out of the workshop. How, you know, if there's anything specific we wanted to have talked about, I can make sure to work with uh, Bill to, to, who runs the workshop for us to make sure we have all that in place and you know, make sure we're keeping it to a timely manner there. I believe we, we have a number of sort of internal things that we wanted to discuss, uh, including whether or not we wanted to have general counsel at every meeting, um, potentially the level of detail in the reports. Uh, I, I, I can go through my notes and, and pull together a list, and maybe we can send that around and see whether anybody has any other ideas. But I think you're asking about what you would have Bill present, and in particular, it's a LAFCO a type of issues. Combination of what you expect to get out of the meeting 
Um, so if you have notes already and you make sure you send them to me and not to each other, we don't want to get Brown Act violations. Um, but if you want to send those notes to me, I can compile a list and then share that with everybody um, in a way that, that will keep us legally safe. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, correct. <laughs> There, there, there are ways okay. to bring it forward without violating the brand. Where we bring it up at the next meeting is like where I can put it in a staff report where it's part of a public record system okay. to, to, okay. to keep so our legal counsel happy. Molly, would that be the preferred method? Not really. Um, <laughs> if I think, it, is there? Do you want to have the discussion now, or is it just because you need time to think about it? Because if you are getting the comments via email, it is about your even. If you, okay. Yeah. So that's thing. And it would be too late to agendize it at the next meeting, I take it, because it's set for September 14th. Well, our next meeting is in August, so we could agendize it then, too. Would that give Bill enough time? I think it would. Um, this, this is a list I had from a uh, previous meeting. Uh, general counsel attendance at meetings, the style of staff reports and MSRs, um, uh, clarifying our policies around island annexation and... Uh, what does what being in a sphere of influence mean? Uh, that might be a policy subcommittee. Um, and then you had a comment about uh, the budget increasing over the last four years. So that's that's a, the list that I had from before. Yeah, Commissioner Blanchfield. Just some, <clears throat> pardon me, just some comments that in the past the the commission developed its goals and its objectives from which its work program and therefore its budget flowed. Um, there's been really a change in the commission since many of those goals and objectives were put together. And before Bill Chiat has said, you know, you might want to revisit that, to see whether those goals or were, are going to set the direction for you today as they did a number of years ago. So you, you might chat with Bill about that. Uh, and then also the work program. You know, how, how are we proceeding on attacking the MSRs? Uh, what happens after we do an MSR? Is there any action items that should take place with it? But um, in chatting with Bill, I think who's done this, he, he and remembers what he has done with the Marin Lasso and gives some good direction. But it's it's that structure, the strategy structure, plus what you need to do uh, to address some of the current issues uh, that I think we ought to look at. Just making sure we capture that, Jeff. The uh, commission goals and objectives, and then what's the action taken after an MSR? And I, I think I missed something. Um, work, work plan. The work, the work the work plan really drives the, the, the budget, or at least it should, and whether the budget goes up or down or stays the way it is. Uh, how aggressive are we in doing the, the MSRs? If we want to get as many done as possible, that takes more staff. Therefore, the budget goes up. So uh, those kinds of things, I think, are important to so look the work, at. The work plan and how that affects the study schedule. As yeah, well. and and what's realistic? Anything else, Commissioner Murray? Just specifically, Sashi, I think uh, we always talked about um, priorities of the, those goals and objectives, and uh, that work, the work plan. If Bill could do that, and then uh, we've pinged them on a variety of things, like some of the studies. Uh, I think one point talked about mutual water companies, and they're not responsive. Is this a statewide pervasive issue? And you know, these, these are things kind of like in Marin Lafco, the JPA legislation kind of came up. So um, it would be interesting, and Bill has a tremendous amount of experience of course, they kind of be ready and ping them with things that might be uh, unique to, and, and maybe not unique, it's, it's pervasive throughout the state, but uh, part of Lafco and our objectives uh, as, that we could bring forward in the strategy session that might be a lower priority in terms of our staff and our capabilities of the budget, but it still should be identified and put on the list in terms of our, our goals and things that we'd like to do to improve our own. 
Okay, so so was that um, uh, you said something uh, about mutual water companies not being responsive? Do you want that particular issue in, or just generally kind of around? I thought that would be a specific example. But yeah. uh, as we get in these plans, it seems like there's uh, recommendations, and it might be a matter of for all of us to kind of go back and look at those recommendations and things that we bring, continue to bring forward. Okay. So, Jason, I thought maybe I should add a little um, additional information related to the budget. My question was really about um, I was here for 14 years, went away for approximately three. In those three years, the budget almost had doubled. And my question was, are we providing double the service? Or what have we enhanced with this increase in budget? And so we thought it would be fair to have a discussion about that. And I realize it's disadvantage for you because you haven't seen what, how this budget happened. So it might be a good chance to check in with Keen and see why the budget grew so much when he was here. What, what was he doing? I do know we added um, other districts in, and we're going to be doing reviews and things. So there's been a scope change, but that was the context of the question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any further thoughts on the workshop topics? No? Okay. Yes, One other thing, and I think the bill could be ready. There's a lot of new legislation coming through. Uh, and, you know, one that seems to be uh, is this new goal of it's going to get to 50 gallons per person per day in California, and, and that will affect us in local government. And the, these might be kind of general topics, particularly if we have members of the audience there too. Uh, they, they may not be directly related to our, our work plan things, but some discussion uh, generally on, on new legislation. And, and Bill always seemed to have um, very good comments. And his vision and interaction and how, where they say we'd be going in our obligations to try to meet those. Have you got all that, Jason? I got all that. And luckily, we have the uh, recording here, because that's really, you don't see me taking a lot of notes during the meeting. I do go back and watch and, and get the, the minutes, because it's hard for me to pay attention to both what you're saying and take the notes at the same time. So I listen to you here and watch it again to make sure I get all the notes correct. So just a few other uh, housekeeping items I always throw at the end of executive officer reports. Um, just so you're aware, I, I was going to introduce staff, but clearly we had that done at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so we do have a civil grand jury report uh, that requires us to respond in July. I'll be working with our now new chair um, to, to deal with that response. Uh, when I was looking through the files, it looked like the chair is the one that officially sends the response. So I will help draft the stuff up and work with you on that response. Um, and then I also, we just got this week, and if anyone's interested, I brought the hard copies with me. We do have our favorite end of the year financial reports for 2017 uh, done by the CPA firm. So if you want a copy of it, you, a hard copy of it, we have them here today, please grab one. We will send it to you electronically as well. So if you don't want to have to deal with the paper, you will be getting either tomorrow or beginning of next week the electronic version of it as well. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to bring up, uh, I got an email today that it turns out that some of you may have heard that uh, in the city of, or town of uh, Corte Madera that there's a council member that's retiring that you may have heard of before. Carla uh, is, is retiring and they're going to be doing a nice little thing for her on Tuesday. They've asked if LAFCO would like to have some sort of plaque or certificate or something. If it is the will of this body, I am happy to help, Vita and I are happy to help figure out some basic thing. The question I would have is, does anyone attend the, the town meetings that would like to present it on behalf of LAFCO? We can get it to you uh, Monday of next week. I've heard that's an excellent town. <laughs> and um, all the best people are there. Um, I know that uh, Carla would greatly appreciate something from uh, Ron LAFCO. And to be honest, I would appreciate it and would be grateful if, any, if one of you would volunteer to take one for the team on that, because it'd be nice to have somebody from this body do the, do the presentation. What are the, what time? Our meeting started at 6.30, and we, if, if a, a visiting dignitary comes, we always shuffle the agenda to fit whatever they're scheduled. I'll nominate uh, Commissioner Redowning. <laughs> 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 That's a good idea. Are you going to be there? Is it one of my favorite towns? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's 
is what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> so I'd be, glad, I'd be glad to do that if you could get it over to my office or give me a call and I'll pick it up. Yeah, happy to do so. We'll get yeah. something over to your office Monday at the latest. So we, so we had a, the resolution that we read to her in our, at our special meeting. Oh, we, staff wasn't in that room, so if you right. can get us that, we will actually turn that into a nice-looking something with a frame around it. That'd be great. Ra Ra Rachel, had, Rachel had it, so you, you have it somewhere. We should figure that out, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, by the way. And that concludes uh, my report. Any uh, commissioner announcements or requests? All right. I, I just want to say I've already said it, and it's been a, a great time. And I, the next meeting, which will be in August, will be my last. And uh, so I'll miss the workshop, but uh, good thoughts. Yeah. You're really going to miss the workshop? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right, well, so it looks like we have to prepare we have another resolution to prepare. Okay. Good thing we have a draft already done. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn to the next meeting? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you.